What's up, guys? Happy Thursday. Welcome back to the Culture and Cannabis podcast. Obviously, we are not in our studio today. I'm currently at my house. JC is currently at his house. And our special guest for today, someone that's been on the podcast multiple times, has hosted the podcast multiple, multiple times, Derek Gooman. What's up, my man? How are we living? How are we doing, guys? It's far enough away, I assume. Uh, you guys are, you're both in your homes. I'm here at the office. Um, we're living. Nice. Well, you know, here, here's the thing. We're, we're practicing social distancing. You know, it's it's a new kind of like live stream that we're doing today. It might be a little little audio, but stick with this, right? Can you hear me okay, Tony? Yeah, I can hear you. Derek, can you hear me? Yeah, you guys are loud and clear. Okay, well, okay. All right. I, you're, you're breaking up a little bit, Derek, Derek but that's okay. Uh, JC, if I go uh, radio silent, I'll just hop in for me if you hear him a little bit better than I do. But Derek, listen. So... You're now at Planet 13. We had you on the podcast to talk about that. And now, you know, this whole coronavirus outbreak, yada, 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 and dispensaries can only deliver, and you're one of the dispensaries that can deliver. How's that going? It's uh, it's going as well as it can. Um, you know, like everyone else, we had to pivot um, very quickly in order to be able to meet the demand uh, of the, the local Las Vegas market here. I mean, it was bananas the, uh, the first couple days um luckily we were already set up for delivery um so we were able to get uh right on top of that right away um but it's been it's been tough man it's been really tough you know i I know a lot of people um when you know this all occurred and and the governor kind of um you know first it was like a voluntary uh and then it became um like we're gonna shut you down if you guys don't close your doors and um you know Luckily, we were considered us as in dispensaries. However, we were very limited, and it's caused a huge, um, not just in our industry, but statewide. Um, yeah, my biggest concern is the rate at which Nevada has um, spiked. It's been an, uh, an incredible transition from people who were working, who were successful, um, figured that they were going to have a paycheck at the end of the week. Now we're seeing record high unemployment filings in Nevada. We actually have the highest rate of filing since uh, the coronavirus broke out of, of unemployment. Um, we have about 183% increase. It's the highest in the United States. So that's huge. And that's it's alarming. And it should be alarming um, for all of us because this is something that is going to affect us for, for a long time. Uh, quite frankly, in my opinion, um, I think he went a little outside of his bounds on this one. Um, you know, there were some businesses I think that could have stayed open um, just with the right in place. But it is what it is. We're making do over here at Planet 13. If you need weed, we've expanded our delivery team. So uh, we're just going to have to roll with the punches um, day by day, week by week until this shit's all over. Yeah, I actually um, got to experience ordering from Planet 13. And this is not a, a, a dig or a dish, but it's so. It's the demand is so crazy right now is that if you get on anytime past noon, you're going to have to wait till the next day to get an order. And just because the capacity is maxed out almost every single day by 12, one o'clock is, are you guys trying That's to, right. you know, are you guys trying to, you know, get more drivers, you know, obviously th- th- we're going to be in this predicament for a while now. So, uh, and I don't think the demand for cannabis is going to stop. Well, that's the thing. Um, so the demand for cannabis won't stop. In fact, um, alcohol, cannabis, uh, those are things that we that we use to to both cope with really tough times, um, but we also use them for celebratory times. So and everywhere in between um, to medicate daily. So um, luckily for us, there is still a demand for cannabis. However, it's manpower and car power at this point. Um, you know, a lot of places had to shutter their their dispensary doors. Um, uh, you know, uh, what is it? I think the 17th, I think through the 17th is when uh, Sislak mandated that they're going to have all these closures until. So um, there's just some places that won't be able to handle that, uh, that long of a, a delay um, for retail sales. So, you know, right now what we've gone and done, and I got to say, we have one of the best teams in the state, if not the best, I've seen such a degree of leadership and um, such a, such a determination to just help one another here. Um, no matter what department people are in at Planet 13, they're going and, and we're, we're wearing a lot of hats wherever we have to. And, um, you know, we're not, you know, we're not afraid to, to do what we have to do either. Listen, a lot of people can't spend the money. We're in a fortunate place where we can. So 
we're going to be building up our delivery fleet um, exponentially in the next couple of weeks. And um, you're going to see that we may end up having um, one of the larger fleets in, in the state as far as delivery services go. And the catalyst was just for the demand. And, you know, we're we're the largest dispensary in the world. So for us to shut, shut our uh, retail operations is a big fucking deal. And uh, not only that, I mean, we don't have the tourists um, coming in from Europe, Asia, uh, and anywhere for that matter, um, you know, because the, the Las Vegas trip has closed all the casinos. So um, things are things are tough, but we're resilient, uh, all of us. And I'm, and I'm just happy that I still have a job. Um, and yeah, man, we're just we're doing whatever we can. Luckily, delivery times have um, gotten better. The, the first few days were madness. Uh, that's probably what you had experienced a little bit that was uh probably a couple days ago or yesterday even but um today things have slowed down a little bit not slowed we're still busy but um we're hitting our our delivery times and it's it's much more functional that's awesome yeah i'm pretty excited to check it out and honestly this is my first time ever ordering cannabis uh for delivery so i i think it's uh interesting because i that's something i never really wanted to do just because i enjoy the experience of going into a dispensary you know, checking out the product, talking with the bud tenders, getting the inside scoop on what you're trying to buy. But in times like this, you're just looking for, you know, um, a good deal, looking for things that you know and whatnot. Um, I got to pick up some of your uh, Ha Ha gummies and your Dreamland chocolate. Um, I think I, I got the Blue Raz, the Watermelon, Pink Lemonade. There it is. There's Dreamland. Dreamland. And I got the uh, grape, and then I got some the crunch, the crunch on the Dreamland, and then the oh yeah, the le- what is it? The dark, the, the lechlin dark. We got uh, we got crackling crunch. Yeah, we've got. Hold on, hold your decadent dark, decadent uh, dark, and other great milk. flavors like like mystical milk. So Mis- I got I also got mystical milk. That was, I that mean, was last there I got. Bre- yeah. Well, listen, uh, demand has been very high. Um, I have seen huge spikes um, across the board in everything and every category um, just based on uh, consumer trends that are that local based consumer trends. So things that you don't usually see spikes and we're seeing huge spikes in like concentrates. Uh, flour has been a uh, huge demand. I'm sure that's statewide. I mean, listen, I, I don't know if you guys remember or ever, Tony, you said you didn't use the services, maybe JC. Um, when it was medical and we only had, uh, um, our, that we can go to, like, uh, I think there was a place called Jolly Green, something or yep. other, I think Bond, one of them, or, or yes, Bondis, Bondis or was one of, one of them. I think, uh, those, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, those were the, those were the shit. I mean, they were good. You know, you know, it's all we had at the time, but I mean, you go online, you go on WeMaps, you find your menu. You look at who has the best deals, right? Always the best deals, and then the, the best um, selection, and then making a mismatch, um, a mix match of, of all that stuff, and then you'd you'd order it, you'd get it whenever you got it. You know, sometimes they tell you an hour, sometimes it'd be three hours, sometimes it'd be six hours. Um, but I remember those days, and it wasn't that long ago. So for me, it's you know, uh, I I'm fortunate and, and lucky enough to where I've gotten enough cannabis products products at my cabinet back home but you know, if i had to order right now I'd, I'd be you know a little annoyed with the demand is crazy i mean I'm, everywhere has just been um a zoo uh and ever since the retail shops have closed but I, I would like to go back to that where do you guys feel um what are your thoughts on on the the clo- the shutdown that we've seen in nevada because for me um i think it's twofold right i think it's like it was necessary i think that we needed to to distance ourselves to some extent but i think i think our governor overreached um, on this one, and I, I'm really, I'm really nervous about the economic impact of not just our industry again, but of of Las Vegas closing and. Yeah, I mean, um, just it was a preventative measure, and I get that. But do we go? Do we go all the way through mid-April? Yeah, I, I I think it's you know I'm so indifferent about it. Like you know I've talked on past podcasts. Me and JC have both talked. You know. I was talking so much shit about this coronavirus uh, when I, you know, in January, beginning of February, and then towards the end of February, I'm like, okay, well, this is like spreading pretty fast. And then March came and shit, you know, shit started, you know, going pretty wild. 
Um, and then my friend started getting coronavirus and I was like, oh, fuck. Well, this shit's ob- obviously real. Um, it's actually happening. But at the same time, we've never had anything in, I don't think in the US economy that's been not like the housing market because during the housing market, businesses were still open. It's just that no one had any money to spend. But now it's that people have money to spend. It's just like there's nowhere to go spend it at. And they don't have well, places that- to go, to go ch- you know, go check it out. So a complete halt of business uh, is, you know, something that we've never seen before. And I think that was just so uh, not, I don't want to use the word irrational, but it was so like quickly happened that I don't think any of us adjusted well to it. Well, I, I don't think anybody was ready and nobody was ready. ready. Yeah, nobody was, nobody was ready. Uh, and, but I mean, you know, I think the way that it's, you know, the whole narrative that it's, it, it kind of puts you in a place to where you kind of have to make, you know, a rash decision. I think that's what the governor did. Um, but, you know, wh- the way that he even said it, you know what I mean? It was, it was kind of like, you know, we were being kind of like scorned, you know what I mean? Like shamed and sent to our room <laughs> situation. He did like, talk shit to us for sure. Yeah. So that, that felt a little bit weird. And, you know, but I think the, I think the overall, you know, you, you can't really, you can't really argue with it. Right. Because, you know, the ventilator situation, what if millions of people do get sick and, and need all these things? We don't have enough supplies for it. I mean, you know, we have to have some kind of reaction to it. Right. And so, you know, whether 30 days is better than two weeks, I don't really think it fucking matters, but I think as long as it's over in a month, then we can definitely get past it, you know, fast track. Yeah. The only, I think the biggest issue is that if it doesn't become over in a month and it extends out, right? Like, what is that, you know, just, 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 you know, on the whole economy, but specifically the cannabis industry, right? Like, uh, cannabis is, uh, a necessity for some people, but it's an extra, an extra for most people, right? It's like, you know, buying alcohol. With that being said, people usually, you know, they drink when they're happy, uh, poor or sad. And usually that goes with cannabis. Um, Derek, if you, if this gets extended past April 17th, what do you think is going to happen with the cannabis industry? All right. Well, I think this is, this is kind of twofold, right? It's like, okay, first of all, we're talking about rash decisions. I think we should, let me, let me step this back. I, I think what we needed to do was what needed to happen. Now, should we have put a time stamp on it? No, I think it should have just been, we take it week by week, day by day. Um, um, my, my, uh, people from coming here by closing the strip and closing down all these um, businesses for a month, this virus is not going to be gone in a month, nor is it going to be gone in a month from other countries and other states. So when our fucking airlines start landing again and people start coming into this town again from all over the world, it is it is still going to occur here. And then what? What do we shut everything down again? No. So like we have to be a little bit tougher. We need to be a little bit more resilient as a as a society. I'm not saying that people need to be tougher fighting the sickness because that's a hell of a fight. And I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is as as humans, as all of us, as one, we need to be a little bit more headstrong and focus on the bigger picture. Now I know it's a scary thing where you know our media has blown this into a huge um, you know crisis worldwide, and maybe it is right. This is a pandemic. We are seeing a strain of of the flu that we've never seen before, but it, it's not killing people off like like uh, the plague. It's not killing people off on a mass mass scale of all ages. Um, it's affecting those that are that are already very old or very sick in many cases. Um, that yes, there are cases with people that are you know in their thirties or forties, right? Um, but again, I think you know by limiting uh, all this economic growth in this time is what is it going to do in a month from now when this virus is still here? We can't just shut the economy down for the next three months. So in my opinion, I, I think that, yes, we needed to do something, and maybe it was a two months or a week or, or four weeks. But at the end of this, there's going to be some dispensaries that do not climb out of the hole. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's I, there's a handful. I'm not going to name them, but I'm fairly certain they're going to be closed. And then... 
behind, it's going to be who can recover from it fast enough. Um, you know, we still have to deal with very high taxation um, in our industry. So, you know, who can afford all those taxes when you don't have the income anymore uh, that you had? And in one of the most profitable profitable times of the year for Nevadans and Las Vegas in particular, um, in our industry, this is a huge blow uh, to a lot of companies. So I, I, a lot of mom and pop shops are going to be closing their doors, in my opinion, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, that's that's interesting you bring that up. I, you know, people ask me if there's ever, like, a busy time in cannabis, and I always tell them it's March, April, May, man, because 420 is a mass thing. And it Full kind of is, it, yeah, it essentially goes from March, it goes from beginning of March to July 10th for 710, and that is when it is the hay, hay days for the cannabis industry to be selling yeah. weed because a lot of people have a lot more money then, they're going to be outside more. They're consuming cannabis, you know, while they're traveling. Vacation, they're coming to Las Vegas. They're, you know, they're going up to Reno. They're going up to Tahoe. So for Nevada, this is, you know, terrible. And then not to mention, you know, we're we're you know we're a gambling we're a gambling state. So you know, every single one that goes casinos are closed. And they're million thirty nine billion dollar loss the casino industry three nine B thirty nine. Yeah, billion. What, I was going to say go? hundred hundreds of millions but yeah 39 billion is sounds about right with a b and and, and that and that money that all that money that 39 billion dollars gets recycled into the economy right you know people got to go pump gas and buy groceries and they want to go out to dinner and go buy go buy weed and go buy some extra clothes and go to that coffee shop a couple times a week so um it's going to be drastic um it's going to be really drastic at first but going forward and being optimistic, it does provide a lot of opportunity, though, to brands that are smaller that could, you know, can weather a storm for multiple months or brands that have the capital in the bank that, you know, could, you know, weather something like this could potentially come out on top even stronger. Um, so to that point, do you think that there's going to be any brands that are going to um, pop up? here after this kind of all settles down and you know take dominance well i think this i think we are we are going to see a very darwinian time um this is going to be survival of the fittest who can adapt to their environment the best period so for instance planet 13 adapted instantly i mean we we turned on every thing that we needed to turn on we we made all the calls we needed to make i mean day one day two and now like i mentioned we're going to have one of the biggest deliveries in the state if not the biggest that is the type of shit you need to do to be a winner now are these little um these little uh, mom and pop operations that are that are running you know family owned they don't have uh the backing from uh, Canadian corporations, um, you know, one percent money coming in for those people. Um, it's going to be tough, but if you can get real lean and real mean, um, you can make this to have all your ducks in a row, your relationships dialed in, um, and you may need to do or make something that you're not used to doing. Brands go. I mean, it's too early to say right now. Um, I've got some in mind that I that I think won't make it. Um, brands that I think you know will make it out of this. I, there's also a couple in mind, but you know, again, they're not. Um, I'm not. I want to. I want to say yet because you know we never know. And uh, so, uh, I just think everyone's got to be open minded right now. Um, be a risk taker. Um, don't be afraid to do something you're not used to doing because I think this is the time now where uh, you, you got, as you said, this plan. Or for those entrepreneurs out there who, uh, you know, have been looking for a time to, to slide in while the competition's down, well, this is the time. So, um, yeah, I, I encourage any brand, whether, uh, and Nevada's or uh, coming from out of state um, to really buckle down and and figure it out, figure it out fast because this is going to be something that uh, it's not going to be able. Uh, it's not it's not going to be easy to get um, you know 
exactly what we all want out of this, which is success and money, right? It's not going to be easy, but, um, you know, for those who can, who can make the adjustments, I think they'll get there. JC, is culture and cannabis going to survive this, uh, this whole ordeal? I think we thrive in this, in this, uh, during these times, you know, um, you know, I think, I think brands, the smaller guys can survive, right? Um, you know, we're used to surviving. I, you know, our, our brand has existed, um, you know, going on four years now, um, you know, with, with, without a bunch of cannabis products, right? And so this is just a huge plus for our brand. And honestly, um, you know, I think it kind of gives us the, the advantage in the market, to be honest. JC, do you think that, uh, you know, obviously go, going off what Derek said, what do you think entrepreneurs can do right now um, that are has a business that is you know up and coming, a brand up and coming, maybe in the cannabis industry, maybe an ancillary from the cannabis industry? What can they do during this time to uh, you know survive this time now and then come on top when this is over? Well, you got to look for the opportunities, right? And I think you know just like you know you've seen gas prices go down. A lot of a lot of services style of things that the price go down, right? And so some of those things that you might not be, be able to afford, or some of those situations that you not, might not have been able to see yourself in, now become you know um, all of a sudden available to you. And so you just have to look for those, right? Whether it's partnerships, or it's you know mergers, or if it's you know raising money, or if it's just digging into your business and this is the squeeze time right look at uh, all your channels of income how your your money is coming in and try to really squeeze those those pipelines and see if you can open them up and, and, and make that flow of money come in you know even more during this time that yeah no and you know I think um, you know for culture and cannabis with us right like as of right now we just been planning a lot um, we don't have we don't have any investors. We don't have any you know no money's been ever plugged into culture and cannabis other than our own money that we put in ourselves. So for companies like us, we don't really have a lot to lose, right? We don't have you know anyone with you know hundred thousand dollar salaries on our brand. We don't own any growth facilities. So being you know it's good for you know a good time for brands that are trying to thrive. This is the time to you know try to make some moves, take some risks, like Derek said. Um, Derek. So looking past this, you guys uh, at Planet 13, you guys uh, just recently in the past, you know, six to eight months have opened a coffee shop. You guys have opened up your event center. You guys have your viewing room. Um, any big plans that you guys are trying to pull off uh, after this is kind of all said and done? Well... Uh, you know, there's a lot of things uh, that we had in the works, and um, most of those things have kind of taken a back seat. Uh, they're on the back burner a little bit. Um, you know, I as far as a timeline for our California launch, um, I'm hoping that is still the beginning of the fourth quarter or so. Um, I don't know how these setbacks are going to affect that. Um, so that's that's big um, for us as as a company. I mean. Planet thirteen hold they have that flag over in, in um, Southern California. So um, that's exciting. Uh, we do have um, you know something we're working on. Um, I can't talk too much about it. Um, it's going to be an experiential uh, museum of sorts. Uh, let's just say that that's going to be relocating uh, over to Planet thirteen. So okay. that's very exciting. We're just working out some final details and some funding on that. Um, but that'll be a little bit down the line as well. We're hoping that uh, still all plays. Um, other than that, it's just constant refinement of our of our own uh, dispensary and our brands. Um, you know, what we're trying to do is be a, a, a distributor. On a scale, that, you know, many places try and do it, but I, I don't think many places do it well. Um, we're trying to do it well, and so, so what I'm hoping to uh, kind of roll out in the, in the timeline it was supposed to, uh, we do have our Elysium um, sparkling beverages that are going to be launching 
in uh, April <laughs> at this point. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, as you said, there's a lot of us that are using this time for R and D, um, for testing some things and working on um, some internal. Right now, it's been great because they've been able to have a little bit more time to, uh, you know, make our sauces, make our pens, and then back back stock. Um, everything that I need to go out and sell to the entire state. So, uh, so that's been really good. But, um, but yeah, you know, right now on the horizon, just exciting to have those uh, those sparkling beverages in, in the works. We're gonna have four or five flavors, and um, they're gonna be fantastic. There's nothing else on the market uh, like like that right now. I mean, two roots beer would be the closest thing, um, but we'll have double the THC at the same price point and uh, no calories, or maybe maybe a ten calories or so. So, um, great sounds, option. That's not Sounds great. Time in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. Sounds like uh, JC's gonna be yeah, drinking it's gonna tons be good. of it. <laughs> <laughs> JC loves his sparkling waters, huh? <laughs> JC JC loves Lacroix more than he loves Leilani. So, and I think Leilani <laughs> loves Lacroix more than she loves JC. So I think it's a mutual thing on that on that side. <laughs> correct me if I correct me if I'm wrong, JC. Hey, hey, so. No, JC. Oh, I guess no, no rebuttal. I guess you're not wrong. I guess you're not. I wrong. guess I <laughs> guess I'm right. <laughs> hey, so guys, when's the next culture in cannabis gonna be? I mean, I'm you know we're all like fuck. Like, when is the next bar gonna open? But like, when's the next event? I'm I'm super stoked. The last one was incredible. Paul Wall was was awesome. For yeah, those yeah. of you who didn't get to to be there that night, it was fucking bomb. So Thank just you. like we appreciate else, it. A lot of the booking agents and the, and the uh, places that we book, they're on hold too, right? And so it, it's a waiting game right now. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things in play. Like, as you know, our, we try to make our events the most big experiences that we can, right? And so it's more than just a one-time thing. We have the after party. We'll have the meet and greets. We'll have the actual event. And so to coordinate all that, it, you know, we have to coordinate with different venues. And li literally every person that we have to coordinate with is – on hold right and so you know i wish we yeah. had you know on this date this is when we're going to come back online but um we're, really we're just kind of like at the end of the 30 days um then we'll be able to now probably hopefully some new dates down the road but it looks yeah. like may 30th yeah it does look like may 30th we'll be able to come back in las vegas uh to those of you that are watching this or listening um, to this in reno nevada listen I'm really sorry. I really wanted to have the, the, the sickest 420 weekend in Reno. Um, but unfortunately, that does not look like it's going to happen. But with that being said, we are looking at dates um, in June and July, maybe a 710 date. Um, and Mike Jones wants to come to Reno. Mike Jones has heard about Reno and he is trying to come. He wants to come have a good time. He's excited about doing the meet and greet at, at Bloom Reno. Um, come and try some of our products so uh when we do come back you better believe these ex experiences are going to be you know top notch yeah because we're guys gonna be i gotta tell you Go i i gotta i gotta tell you something when we come back from this okay when we come back on april 16th day one when we can fucking walk into a bar again and, and just order a beer or we can go out and just have a, a steak and lobster. Dude, we need, like, it doesn't need to be culture and cannabis, guys. And this, I'm just like, you know, I'm free-flowing right now. I'm just throwing mud at the walls. We need Let's to throw, it. like, a fucking comeback from Corona party. Like, yes. a comeback from Corona. It'll be the biggest rager of the year. I mean, we don't have to go crazy. We don't need, we just, we could do it ourselves. Like, I don't give a shit. I mean, I want to be do acrobats doing flips through the house. Fucking, uh. Uh, just be wild. I mean, I, I don't want to get too lewd, but you can imagine what kind of parties I've got in mind. So I'm just yeah. talking some crazy shit here, but I, I think yeah, it'd be no. a great idea. I mean, people need something to, to look forward to. Yeah. Rowdy for Rona. And that's probably really quick. I'm sure that could be pretty awesome at the same time. Yeah. No, I think that's something that we definitely <laughs> yeah. want. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little DIY dinger. Yeah. A little DIY dinger. Love it. I love it. Yeah. But uh, but listen, Derek, listen, uh, don't want to take up too much of your time. I know that you're at work. Uh, we want to, first off, thank you for coming on the podcast. 
secondly, thank you for being at work right now. Obviously, you know, it's not easy uh, doing what you're doing. I understand that you're probably not doing sales right now. You're probably helping in some other facet of the company, probably, you know, with deliveries or just doing whatever you personally can to help um, medicine get to patients. And that's really what it is. People believe, think just weed is just weed going to stoners. It's no, it's people are so happy, almost, you know, probably in tears when they see a Planet 13 truck pulling up to drop off their, um, their product. So uh, first, just want to thank you. Uh, really appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, and uh, and yeah, and that's and that's really big. Uh, obviously, let's plug you. Uh, where can where people where can people find you that well, don't know uh, already? Yeah, real quick, uh, I'd actually also like to give a big uh, thank you and and just all the gratitude in the world. Uh, the dispensary workers uh, here and statewide that have been probably on no sleep and um, working nonstop hours. Um, some of the, you know, some of them harder than they've ever worked before in some cases. And goddamn professionals, the nurses, the doctors, the policemen, the firemen, the EMTs, the first responders, um, all, all the grocery workers out there, all those people who are fucking dealing with those nightmare customers right now, night and day, restocking again to no sleep, like, my heart goes out to each and every one of you guys out there, and I fucking love you. And I wish I had, um, you know, a million bucks to give each one of you. Or, or uh, hey, I'll invite you to the comeback from Corona dinger if it goes down. <laughs> we'll, we'll have one for you. Okay, it'll be for you guys. Um, I s swear to God. Um, but yeah, just thank you all. Um, you guys are, you know, without you, our society would be crumbling right now, legit. And and all the gun shops too. Fuck. All the gun shops out there who didn't Shout see this out. one coming, right? So, Second hey, Amendment. So, um, but yeah, really, yeah, everybody out there, just a big thank you. On Instagram, Derek Las Vegas. Um, you can also find us at Shop Planet 13 if you guys are looking for delivery during these times. Again, wait times are being cut down by day, and um, we've got some of the best products in the damn state over here at Planet 13. So check us out, www planet 13 lasvegascom Thank you so much, Derek. JC, what, what do you got for us? Yeah, I'm just smoking on some flour. Um, hey, uh -huh. and that's that, the, uh, that culture of cannabis flour was good. Uh, got to do a bong hit before we left, you know, just uh, listen, stay positive. I like it. I saw that. Yeah. What um, is that? What, is that that 91 VA skunk? This is the new 91 chem VA skunk, yeah. It's testing it like Ooh. 20 really dense uh, buds. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Clean stuff. So, Sun grown, all organic. Yeah, we dropped two of those uh, deliveries at Bloom DI and Bloom Reno. So. Yes, so to all the people that want to pick up some half ounces, uh, stock up for your hibernation time right now, pick up some of this amazing 91 Chem VA Skunk. It's truly really, really good. I have some as well. I could go grab it, but I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, listen guys. So, you know, we don't know what the future is. Obviously we're going to try to do this podcast every Thursday, regardless of, you know, the studio not being open, um, and whatnot. We're going to probably try a couple different ways during this time to figure out what the best platform is. We're doing it this time on Skype, but we might move to zoom or Facebook or a different platform for the next one. So just be patient. Um, if you, if you're interested, you can always DM me or JC or the culture and cannabis page. Be more than happy to point you in the right direction for anything we got going on. And if you have any questions too about, you know, cannabis during this time, hit us up. Let us know. We would more than happy to help you point you in the right direction. Get you signed up on the Planet 13 website. Get you signed up on the, the Bloom Reno or DI website and just help you know help you get cannabis here in this uh, crazy times. Uh, other than that, I'm full time Tony. This is the Culture and Cannabis Podcast. That's JC Coates, and that was episode number 37 in the books. Thank you, guys. Appreciate all your time and the, uh, the platform here. Always a great time hanging with you. Always a good time. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you guys next Thursday. Peace. Peace.